Nerds, this is Staying in Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont, and with me as always is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, Sarah. Happy Tuesday evening to you. Tuesday, Bye. and next week is Election Day. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Make sure you, you go vote. Uh, vote your conscience. I'm not going to tell you how you should vote or anything, but uh, it is a very important election, so in, in both for presidential race as well as in many states uh, around the country, big races. So uh, exercise your constitutional right. I, I, I early voted this past Sunday. Felt so good. Are we going to record on Election Day? I was going to talk to you about that. I was thinking maybe we <laughs> should either do it the night before or if the republic is still standing, we could do it the night after. <laughs> um, that is um, the Will's Super Bowl. So people go support. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because good Lord, my, my Panthers probably, you know, at this rate, it'll probably be celebrating their 30th anniversary and it'll probably be <laughs> 30 years before they show yeah. up in the Super Bowl again. Yeah. Oh, gosh. I've- Every now and then I see your your tweets about football and I just think to myself, there was a time growing up, like I have three brothers in case listeners are new. I, I'm i very well aware of football. I've been a fan of football. I was a big fan of the Colts back in the day with Peyton Manning. Mm-hmm. And um, that it's a beautiful thing, yet it is so hard. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like even even now, every now and then, I I think I've casually watched maybe the Super Bowl or something, mm. and I'm not even technically a fan, and yet I my gut I'm like oh I want this team to win, and then as the tides change, I'm like dear lord no no, and I'm like why am I so <laughs> invested? It's it's the most bizarre experience oh so. yeah well that's the great thing about sports to me there was not yeah, like there was a game sunday evening you know, the, the commanders and the uh, uh bears and it was like a hell mary and you know got tipped and the and the chicago player was like taunting the, the fans and then he was like realized that oh my god it's a hell mary and like ran back over but by then it got tipped and and the washington player caught it and it was just like everybody just erupted i don't i don't even like washington but i was like holy shit that was what a play so right right yeah. like you don't honestly sometimes it doesn't matter who made the play it's just like mm-hmm. if it's a good play it's a good play it's just exactly. like oh yay these two rival teams are playing each other yet the game is boring <laughs> <laughs> you just yeah. at the end of the day honestly just want a good game exactly as exactly as emotional of a roller coaster ride you will go on you mm-hmm. just want a good game just just like with a movie or a tv show yep you honestly just want it to be good <laughs> yes yes and we've, and we've been very fortunate this past month that we've had two really yeah. two really good really really good shows <laughs> yes Yes. Before we get into those shows, I do want to pick your brain because yeah. I know we have talked about Daredevil before and mm-hmm. you did not watch the Netflix runs as as is well known around here. Yep. Um I did. Um but since Daredevil Born Again is set to premiere on March March 4th, 2025, yeah. There has been, there was shown some trailers, but I don't think anything has officially been released. We know we're getting um, Punisher. We know we're getting all of the usual suspects. Um, so as we get closer to March, what are your feelings about this show, considering like your history with the character? Yeah, so given my history with the character, I, you know, I, I, it's almost like I'm approaching this show like I did uh, House of the Dragon, because I didn't watch Game mm. of Thrones either, you know. So right. yeah, so I'm I'm coming into it fresh. I have I can come into it with no really no expectations other than you know as far as like trying to compare it between the Netflix show versus the Mar- you know the DC uh, the, right. the Disney Plus show. You know, I, I, and you know everything I know about the show. I mean, you know, I did watch some of the other Netflix shows like Jessica Jones and and um, oh God, uh, Iron Fist. 
<laughs> which was probably not probably was probably not you know not the one that you want to remember but uh but with daredevil i i'm looking forward to it um uh, just remember yeah, yeah. everyone like you and you know some other friends who, uh that i have who's one of my good friends he's a big daredevil netflix fan mm -hmm. and um so I, I I I'm looking forward to it, and like I said, I'm just going to be able to watch it with uh, untainted eyes, and and, yeah. and, can, and and measure it just on its you know on its merits as a Disney Plus show, and um, and especially you know given the up and down history of Disney Plus shows, um, yeah, I, I'm very curious to see how you're going to react to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, don't forget. We've already seen him in She-Hulk mm -hmm. and it, earlier this year in Echo. Yeah, true. So, true. so we got we got a little bit of some appetizers as they've been breadcrumbing this homecoming of the character and of what was started and left on. Not there's been worse um, TV shows to live like like kind of leave things um open-ended and yet mm -hmm. get canceled um but it definitely didn't feel as though it was the end of the story um and and my i'm i'm looking forward i'm i'm kind of keeping it at, at a distance i'm i mean to go to back to your point about game of thrones i'm approaching it kind of in the same way as last of us where mm -hmm. i um I d I'm not saying that I've read the comics or anything, but I have an idea of what they're probably going to end up doing based mm -hmm. on theories when the when um, the original series was airing on Netflix. So, and if they do that, then we're in for a good ride. And if they yeah. don't, then maybe we're still in for a good ride. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not well one to theory spiral myself into not liking something that i yeah. haven't watched yet <laughs> exactly just because yeah it doesn't yeah uh, and that's one of the things i admire about you is just because something doesn't go according to your head canon you, you know you're not like a lot of people out there who just like if it didn't go to according to your head canon it just, then the show automatically sucks so yeah 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 i i think i think wandavision kind mm -hmm. of the lesson learned of that has stayed with me over mm. the last four years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I think before um, pre WandaVision, I was very much willing to theory spiral. The, the, I mean, I, I read Arrow fan fiction all day, all day. <laughs> so, so, but, but I, I think, I think it's almost as though the Arrowverse kind of for us, like let let a foundation mm -hmm. of and we, a lot of lessons learned about how how the shows and so now the level that we're receiving these shows the expectations have changed and also yeah. the let's not theory spiral to the point where we're writing a separate script and then get upset when mm -hmm. the writers don't follow what we've written in our own mind Exactly. And, and honestly, like, it's just about trust. And this leads us into Agatha all along because I, I just, at, by the end of this episode, um, the only thing that I can really say to sum up my thoughts is this episode is arguably one of the best examples of a an episode in a season that you didn't think you needed, mm -hmm. but when it airs, you're like, damn, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I for didn't sure. know that I needed that in this story for a number of reasons that we're going to get into, but I'm sure as hell I got that. And, um, the only other thing I'm going to point out before I'm going to let you share your overall thoughts is is that um, I literally the first scene I wrote down this not knowing any of the context about what was to come, but just the good witch parentheses Lilia 
falls from grace. Yeah. <laughs> I I did not I did not know it just looked like I was like wow she's dressed it just that that imagery stuck in my head and I'm yeah. like the good witch uh, but but yeah so that is my starting points on Agathal Long episode seven death hand in mine will what about you yeah I I'm there with you I mean this was as it was in our earlier thoughts about tv shows and stuff and thinking about as i mentioned you know the up and down nature of some of the shows on disney plus um this definitely will, will when i watch this episode i, I haven't had a a, a a verbal out loud reaction to a show on disney a marvel show in disney in a very long time i think mm -hmm. the last one was maybe um I think I guess Loki was the last look the Loki finale whenever uh, that, yeah. was, that was one where I was just like damn and so in this episode that's I had that moment uh with with Lila but with when she turned that card over and the towers flipped and 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 I saw what was transpiring there and to your point about the the good witch falls from grace I had that mm -hmm. that was you know that this that because it was a very you know non-linear stories can go they can either work really well or they can go right. sideways and this was <laughs> this was chef's kiss as far as a non-linear story with cutbacks and, and flashbacks and everything that i haven't you know it, it was just so well executed and just when they had that moment and they pulled everything together i was like yeah yeah this show this this this, this is this show is is like Probably, I, you know, this week I will say this show was my favorite show of the week between Agatha and Penguin. Um, I am so glad episodes. you said that. I am so glad you said that because I will be honest, I I was waiting for my turn to say that yeah. and for you to be mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> Just, and not to say Penguin was bad, but I mean, this was, this right, was, right. I mean, I was, and I watched it again tonight right before we recorded just to see if my gut reaction was was the same and and I, it was i mean i just like this this was a solid this is a well executed out uh 40 minutes of television yeah i um have not rewatched it i've been a bit busy but it is something that if i ever after the show is over maybe end up this weekend i might say i just want to throw that back on just mm -hmm. Because I'm sure I missed things and because there was so much going on and yeah. it was non told non linearly, but I guess, hmm. so man, because it's non linear storytelling, yeah. it's very like we, <laughs> it's almost as though it's a challenge when we already review shows non literally non sequential yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it falls right, falls right in our wheelhouse <laughs> right it should it should so but i guess i guess a good starting point is just how last week in particular with billy's origin story um we meet lilia right in the beginning mm -hmm. as the fortune teller and we have the tower reversed line. We also commented last week about how it was as though she was possessed. Mm -hmm. But and 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 that was just so that conversation we had last week stuck in my mind as soon as we started realizing some of what was happening with L Lilia and just how much she's actually her power and her abilities are connected to time in a way that we had no idea. Although, and I think this is why the non-linearness worked so well is because they flashed to the breadcrumbs that they were, they were laying throughout mm. all of the previous episodes. Yep. Um, even the episodes that were, 
arguably some like the worst of the season. You're just like, oh, I forgot about that moment at the time that stuck out to me when they were trapped in the house that was being flooded. Mm -hmm. But I had forgotten about that. Um, but now it makes sense and, and I'm really glad. So I just really appreciate how the, the writers were smart enough where it didn't come out of nowhere yeah. and they had planted enough seeds, but the seeds were deep enough where you also didn't even suspect it. <laughs> yeah. That's, and I think that's why it was just so, especially when I, it's, well, and the reason why I did rewatch it because there was just so much, and I think I just wanted to like go back and like pick up those, see those cues again, right. like as you were mentioning that from the prior episodes, and and they did. I mean, especially when it's like Ishikuki, you know, it was like all yeah. all those little things that they just they just laid the foundation, and that, and I just that's the type of storytelling that I've been missing out of the MCU, uh, some of these Disney Plus shows. Is just the mm -hmm. that that solid that 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 storytelling foundation, and then and then they executed it. And I know and, and I, know, I was looking at the credits and I, and I noted Jack Schaefer, who was the showrunner for both this show and One Division, uh, was the director. She didn't write it this time, but um, but I think just the way this episode was directed, you know, it's like that 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 peak, you know, ship of thesis moment in WandaVision, you know, those the standout moments in WandaVision that you know, that made, you know, that set the bar so high for for, yeah. for the Disney Plus shows. And that was I felt that same way when I was watching this episode. And and also to your point, as you as you mentioned earlier about, you know, we had Billy's story you know right. last last week and and then and in whatever Billy and Agatha were trying to um figure out the tarot cards and, and, and the readings and and just stumbling well, through it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it very quickly also answered uh, or it, it resolves something from last week and the fact that I pointed out like how is it that Agatha is the only one alive? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean like what did she do? Mm -hmm. And we we had no idea. Well it turns out Neither Jennifer nor Lilia died. They just ended up in the tunnels. Right. And very conveniently were able to, well, conveniently and also just because of Lilia's gift, be able to navigate very quickly to figure out where to go. Um, because the last the this last trial is all about tarot cards and falls up into Rolls up into uh, Lilia's uh, overall power set, if yeah. you will, <clears throat> and and um, what what something to that I think that the writers did a good job in in this episode is also reinforcing that idea that all of these witches who joined this cousin coven for different reasons have either have what we perceived as lost their powers mm -hmm. and that's what they want. But it turns out with Lilia over the course of this episode, which was surprising. No, no, no. She has always had her power. She's mm -hmm. just learned over time, over centuries, how to mute it per se, because yeah. when you have that ability to go through time the way she does, she ultimately just focused on the death of it all. Yeah. And that's why this this episode is called Death's Hand in Mine is because we find out that she did have a coven when she was growing up and when she was really coming into her own abilities. And then she could see the future, but she couldn't do anything to stop it. Yeah. So she couldn't do anything to protect her coven. And and that's why the moment, the self-sacrifice at the end is so important and such a, a good way to, to end this, this journey for her is mm -hmm. because she was able to do for them what she wasn't in the past. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the, yeah, that, that fear, you know, because I was just thinking about that. That was another thing that was really, really resonated with with me in this, with, with her journey as we, as we learn more about why she, you know, that she held back from, from it because yeah, she, you know, she can go from literally having the time of her life to like, you know, flashing to the point where she, she sees her, her end. I mean, like the way the, quite frankly, the way the episode began and, you know, and, and so we think about it from that standpoint, like if, if you had the power to divination like that to, 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 and, and, and see, events you know you know how would you react to that and i think that was one of the things that 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 really also resonated with me in this episode too as a viewer it's just like okay you know i I could see why she why she went down the path that she did um Mm -hmm. and and you know and you know and even like and even whenever she was reading the tarot cards to, to to billy whenever whenever they did finally figure out what was going on and he was you know asking the questions and you know billy asked the question like you know, am I Billy or am I William Kaplan? You know, she, you know, I think her, she didn't answer the question because I think part of it is like, you know, she wanted to allow him that same journey of self, self journey of, of self, you know, actualization and figuring out who, who he is and, and not, not answer that question for him because, you know, otherwise, you know, he, the lessons that she's learned along the way and and to get to that point where we saw in the end of the episode where she realized that she had to make that sacrifice you know billy's got to have billy williams got to have the well, teen or has got to have that journey for himself and she can't answer that for him and I, and I thought that was another really strong thing about the episode too i didn't think that she couldn't answer it no i she thought that no she she wouldn't answer it as you meant to say i meant to say I, that's what I meant to say. She wouldn't answer the question for him. Well, that, that was did. that was his question for the tarot card reading, right? Yeah. And but she couldn't. She she didn't finish it because she realized that it what like the game they weren't if even if they she had played the final few cards because mm-hmm. I think she got like halfway through. Yeah. It, it wouldn't have stopped the True. trial because the trial wasn't about billy it was yeah. about her yeah she's yeah. the traveler he's not the traveler and but that does bring up something i wanted to point out i thought that coming off of last week where we end with just agathon billy and we get so much information about billy and these two are our main characters to then go into this episode and they they did a very smart job about leading us with with those two characters mm-hmm. still asking questions i i like the question is wanda max moss really dead and just the distrust between these two and then and then slowly but not too slowly also getting this b storyline with lilia and then about 20 minutes in, it's like, no, 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 this isn't, this isn't Agatha and Billy's episode. <laughs> no, <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> this is Lilia's. <laughs> like, yeah. it, it makes a quick turn, but they had to do that because even though this is Lilia's episode, it, it still doesn't take away from Agatha or Billy's parts and their journeys. Um mm-hmm. Because those questions from last week, viewers still also have in their mind. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was another, yeah, I think that's, uh, that was another, like, highlight for the episode, too. It's just, uh, and, and also, um, you know, it's, I love that, I love Agatha's line, you know, X, you know, you know, trying to get straight answers. It's not, you know, I, I like, I, I like trying to get find a-, a straight straight lady yeah <laughs> you gotta find a straight witch yep yep yeah, that was yeah. that was a a great quote from that episode for sure yeah yeah and because it, it had so many levels to it i mean not only you know the, the, the one of the big things is just like even like whenever uh you know whenever lila and and, and billy are, and the team were like you know the querent and he's like you, he's like you mean the querent <laughs> so yeah i just yeah you know and so you know really digs you know so 
that same line from um, Agatha just you know really digs into this you know the, the not hiding the fact that she's that she's queer and and you know and it, it gets back to the relationship with her and Rio. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Which which we learn a little bit about because man I completely forgot about Rio. <laughs> completely <laughs> forgot about her. And then and then so so at the beginning during Bill when Billy and Agatha start start their way to the next trial Rio's br- brought up and mm-hmm. and it sounded as it, it was almost inferred that Agatha did something to her yeah. um during the havoc of that of that scene with with Billy coming out um and and then later through um Lila or Lilia, I, I swear I'm apologizing to our listeners right now. I'm pretty sure we've pronounced this character's name differently at least five or ten times. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember exactly. So, um, is that is that um, she Rio is death the mm-hmm. A.K. the original Green Witch. Yep. <laughs> what can I say? I like the bad ones. <laughs> So, I like the bad so, boys. <laughs> so is this is this like new his like is is the original Green Witch really death? Like I'm confused. Um, I mean, at least in the context of this show, I mean, I think yeah, I mean, because remember, what was it in, uh, when they were was it episode five? Whenever the Green Witch showed up, um, they they were trying to conjure the Green Witch. If I recall, oh. oh gosh, earlier like what? Did, whenever they when they first summoned Rio, weren't they trying to summon the Green Witch? Oh the, oh okay okay, the you know, Green wh- Witch. Wh- so I was thinking about the witch from the Wizard, Wizard of Oz that Agatha mm-hmm. was dressed up as, right? Um, this episode, not the green witch who we thought at the very beginning of this series was uh mrs hart yeah 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 but yeah. mrs hart dead you know what mrs hart if you're listening please return and be like i'm not <laughs> dead i just made right. you think I was. yeah 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 <laughs> because you know since mrs hart was dead needed still... someone to add to the dumb birth in the coven yeah so they yeah so and that's when she showed up. Well, they needed a green witch because each yeah. of the trials, and I mean, ha- have have we experienced the green witch trial? Because I don't. I felt like uh, Mrs. Hart was taken out early. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but yeah. okay, that that makes more sense. So yeah, I mean, yeah, and I think they were just having, you know, I think, you know, clearly they. Had Agatha show up as the the the, the Green Witch, just uh, you know, just uh, the Wicked Witch, the Wicked Wicked Witch, Witch. just for, for yeah, just for fun. But yeah, but at the end of the day, no, she she's not. <laughs> yeah. 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 And also, still, again, with all of the lines about c- cultural culture appropriation. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> that was a nice touch. Which, yeah, with Tur- Lila and Jen, Yeah, that was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it it can it just dawned on me how how layered of a joke that is considering all the history of Disney and culture <laughs> appropriation. <Yep. laughs> so, yeah, 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 the the writers are getting their 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 giggles for sure. They totally are, yeah, totally are. I mean, because yeah, because yeah, we had that a few weeks, yeah, with the broomsticks and now this one, this episode. Mm-hmm. So yeah, every I think there's always at least one reference to that in in each episode <laughs> in some form or fashion. Yeah. <laughs> lately, lately there has been um yeah. and and then next week will be our say la vie as they close with episode 8 and 9 and yeah, tomorrow, so, yeah. Yeah, it's just I I think so far and granted we haven't watched the last two episodes they haven't even aired yet, but I feel as though Agatha all along has done is re- has they started off strong there was a dip but it wasn't a a dip to like can we please stop watching this yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> it just got a little bit more silly mm-hmm. but now especially with the last two episodes 
it's just like it was silly, but it was still doing things to set up to the foundation that got us here. Yeah. And good good lord what they've set up for those final two episodes. But I'm I'm very excited and I'm very happy that we have circled back to this because um it overall it's 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 just a season of TV that we didn't think we wanted nor needed mm-hmm. at this mm-hmm. point. But so far I'm pretty I'm pretty glad we we got it and um yeah. it's doing well from what I understand in the ratings and yeah. Yeah, yeah. I completely agree and and you know one last little bit of the, the score with the show and just uh you know with the ending credits with Jim Croce's time in a bottle. I mean that was just again just I think Put the like, put the cherry on top of the uh, of the uh, of this episode because it was just such a great touch, given all the things that that happened in that episode. So it it, it is a great touch. However, all that song makes me think about though is the um, is ironically in a weird way the the X Men sequence of mm. um, Quicksilver. Huh. <laughs> because that's the song that's played am i not wrong about that oh gosh when we you're... first see evan peters quicksilver in that movie that i'm blanking on which one of them it is it's not the second one they try to redo it and it's just shit but it's it's so i don't think it's apocalypse i think it's the other one it, it, it's all done to time in a bottle oh, and it's just it's... brilliant huh is it days of future past or I, can't I think remember. it might be yes it's days of future past because because then you're left after that sequence thinking to yourself really he couldn't they why, why couldn't they just have gone like he should have gone with them <laughs> <laughs> so he had one sequence and then they tried to redo it in an apocalypse and it just like apocalypse just imploded on itself (laughs) but anyways so um but yeah so i i if if that for some reason and arguably maybe it's because the prior week evan peters appeared in Mm one in the show um but yeah anyways but but yeah it it was it was good (laughs) not a little trippy for me um all right that brings us to the Penguin Episode 6, Gold Summit. Despite his enemies' attempts to smoke him out, Oz seeks to expand his reach in the city. Meanwhile, Victor crosses paths with a former adversary. I um, need to talk about Sophia and Eve. Okay. So, I I just, because I know earlier... We talked about how Agatha all along was um, between the two better. Mm-hmm. And it's not saying one is worse, though. No. But the scene yeah. between Sophia and Eve Carlo, because this episode, Sophia and Sal are fed up with, with Oz. They mm-hmm. want to find him, obviously, for revenge. So a lot of their interactions is very like, okay, we see. <laughs> Okay, and I'm not, I'm not even going to touch the sex scene. Not between them, but no. between the therapist and Sophia. I'm like, I'm like, no, 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 no. Some things <laughs> don't need to be discussed. So, but, <laughs> but so they're smoking. And so, of course, I'll, I'll give it to the writers. Around the same time that Sophia has this idea and finds the panties, I'm like, well, she has met like Eve and the girls. So she 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 through them finds finds Eve and then there's this great scene. Mm-hmm. Like th- this scene I think is is one of my favorite scenes of the entire show. Agreed. Because it's a rarity to see, um, to have this kind of dialogue that is a chess match, mm-hmm. that is very much life and death, and is between two women. Mm-hmm. Now I know, I know they're technically talking about a man. Technically, yeah. 
But yeah. there are layers that they've been building with Eve Carlo's little like presence that has just been lurking in the background and they've allowed this to happen. And so I love the fact that Eve clearly scared ball while simultaneously hats off to the actress simultaneously powerful in this and strong is invites Sophia in gun in hand, clearly no, like one of them, like, Eve's going to bite it. But they have the conversation. And during the conversation, Eve Eve makes it clear, like, I know who you are. You're the hangman. And then we get into this, this conversation about, well, is Sophia's not the um, hangman. And Oz knew about it. Now, I want to circle back onto that. <laughs> but yeah. I don't want to lose track on this. Just because... I know at the end of the day, Eve sold Oz out, Mm -hmm. but she did it in such a noble way. I can't be mad at her Mm -hmm. because because she took account everything that Sophia said in terms of her not being the hangman, Oz selling her out and causing her to become the hangman for public appearance sake. Mm -hmm. And... And then the the quid pro, pro, pro quid pro co of it all, where it's like, so you're gonna kill me? I mean, that's what you do. You're the hangman, or or you're not anymore. I think she says, but that's yeah. not you, right? And then it's at that moment that Sophia's like, damn, checkmate. Because if I shoot her, I am the killer. Yeah. But if yeah. I don't, like, like it was it's so good. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of why I think at the end, although I, I don't I don't know how much more remorse we're gonna get from Sophia, but at the end she's more observing rather than just going in there swinging um for the fences. But she she it's it's such a great scene and and I like how Okay, okay, Sophia Sophia doesn't know. She's getting out. It looks like Eve's going to live. And then Eve just nonchalantly is like, here's where they are. Yeah. You didn't hear it from me. I do wonder <laughs> if, if that's going to turn around and bite her in the ass and, and Oz is going to find out and ultimately he's going to kill her. Um, but I just, I, I just, it was beautifully written. It was, yeah. it. It made perfect sense each character's question, response, and action. And and I just I just it stood out so much to me that I just wanted to start there. Um but but it does raise that question to me from what we know and especially talking about that fifth episode and Sophia's backstory of how she got thrown into Arkham. Will, do you think Oz really knew that it was Carmine behind the murders and that he would do that? Or did he just tip him off that your daughter's talking to reporters? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. Um, Knowing Oz and knowing how he operates, I think he was covering for Carmine. Okay. I do. I do okay. now. Now I think. I, I think. Yeah, I think. Yeah, that's how he operates. I mean, he he sees a, he sees an opportunity, and you know, we, and at the end of the day, he is you know he's 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 a power climb. He's, he's trying to climb that ladder, and he thought this was a way to like gain favor with Carmine to get to 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 advance his to advance himself. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Right. I, I, I don't the and maybe it's just because underneath all of that makeup is Colin Farrell de- delivering one hell of a performance. So he makes Oz look like a really good actor. Mm-hmm. Um, 
for some reason, I keep flashing back to him him warning Sophia, and then especially when they get pulled over in the car, he just seemed really confused to me. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> why. But he does that. Like, I mean, because yeah, I mean, I think that's just. I mean, even when Oz is telling the truth, that, that's the thing. It's just like he's like when he told Sophia there in the parking lot, he was telling her the truth. I'm sorry, I did this, you know. Because he, he basically confessed to, like, not protecting her. Right, right. Which would, but there are two different things. Like, that's not a confession that, yeah, I knew your dad killed your no. mom. I knew your dad killed those women. And I threw you to him and saying, hey, here's your scapegoat. Yeah. That, yeah. that was more him saying, I told him admitting, here's my interpretation of it. That was him more saying, yeah, I told your dad something. Like, remember, we technically have not seen that conversation. Right, right. So we don't really know for sure what he knew and what he told. All we knew was the consequence of it all. Yeah. So so I took it more as like, yeah, I, I did something that ultimately led to you being thrown into Arkham instead of your dad. Yeah, and and um, yeah, and that's why I, that's why I, I answer your question the way I did. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Then we're then we're on the same page because yeah. because I agree. I'm not I'm not here claiming he's innocent, and I don't no yeah. means. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I the when when in taught in in this scene between Eve and Sophia, Sophia makes it seem like he knew everything. Mm-hmm. But I'm thinking in my mind, I'm like he was your driver so how much did he know about everything that your dad was up to so and and we also don't know how long he has been her driver so I, they're doing a good job about making making me still see and understand two perspectives on this series of events mm-hmm. and um and the the kind of the the lack of specific specifics um caused me to be like okay well neither are technically lying but we also still don't know the full story yep. <laughs> so, so i understand your different points and and still despite everything else i mean arkham or no arkham he killed her brother. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, that yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and okay, the there's another scene that I want to bring up um and and get into more of Oz's storyline in this episode mm-hmm. with his mom. Mm-hmm. Because the scene where Vic comes and is is trying to talk to him about Squid. Mm-hmm. And his problem he has. Mm -hmm. There's. This is a combination of Colin Farrell just nailing everything. And also the dialogue. The fact. Like just the. Vic talking. And then all of a sudden Oz. And he looks like he's going to respond. And then he just goes into. A very casual. Very boyish. Um, thought about him being unable to protect his mom mm-hmm. because the doctors who have these diplomas and these machines don't know what she has. So how the fuck is he supposed to protect her from something? No one knows what it is. Like it's mm-hmm. the imaginary mm-hmm. friend. Yeah. And he says it in such a beautiful way, such an endearing way. Mm-hmm. And a hopelessness, yet that, but also just the way it was executed and written, I was just like, that's how you write dialogue. Yeah. Like, there, there, we, we get, we've seen so many shows with hunker da- down exposition and everything, but that came out of left field while simultaneously it wasn't because of previous scenes we've seen between him and his mom in particular 
in this episode, it's just like, yeah, that's what he's focused on. Mm -hmm. And, and I just, I, I loved that whole moment so much. I mean, give him the Emmy. Yeah. Sorry, Pedro. (laughs) (laughs) Pedro's going to be sporting. I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that, it's like put me in the supporting category because Colin's going to win this year. Uh, yeah, I completely agree. I mean, that scene um, with with uh, yeah, yeah, that's. But uh, you know, I think it it really just showed that the, for me, like Oz, that's probably the one. That's the one level of I guess humanity or whatever you want to call it that he has is through his mother and and maybe to some degree with Vic. Um, yes. Yeah um as 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 things because you know as the episode you know we whenever the episode first starts uh you know we we get it's a little you know it's a little bit of a time jump i think it's about a week or so since they found the tunnels and they you know things are fully fully humming and and then you know and again there's that that moment between oz and vic and you know talking about they're going to remember our names and the whole you know oz was he you know we had another rex calabrese moment uh there at the beginning and you know oz is feeling he's feeling like i'm i'm doing something here and he's feeling very proud and he's you know oz and vic are going to be the legends of gotham uh for what they would you know like like you know oz is how oz sees rex now oz is going to be in that you know he's going to be held on that same pedestal in the in the in, the, in, in the gotham because of all the good he's doing for the people in crown point so you know so that was really that that moment like you sh- as, that you shared um, where I think those are only some of the moments of vulnerability that this character shows uh, with his ma and, and with Vic that, you know, other people just don't get to see. Yeah. It's interesting that the gangster he keeps referencing is Rex and mm-hmm. we learn that his dead brothers are both named Jack and Rex. No, his other, no, his other, his brothers Jack and Benny, Rex is Jack and Benny. Yeah. So yeah, who's Rex... the dad? Because I almost feel like there was a name drop of the dad, and I'm trying to look at my notes. Um, yes. Yeah, there's still ben, there's the, no, the dad's the, the dad's are named still. There's been references. The name? Okay. Yeah, that's the because... one name. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well. Well, Rex, I might have to rewatch. Yeah, but it we, but because... we did. Yeah, though we, you know, we, we, we theorized that Rex could be Oz's unnamed father. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could have sworn she said she said Rex at one point. She did, not him. Yeah. yeah. Um, because there, there were moments because this episode. Um, now it we, could be. Yeah. It, it yeah, could be but the east side thing, you know, because you know that they are, you know, they they are the people from the east side, and, and Rex was the, you know, the, the you know, maybe there's a connection there with the with the brothers, with Oz's brothers yeah. being killed with Rex. Maybe, maybe. yeah, maybe that's the um, yeah. maybe potentially. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we we have a great um, breakfast moment between mm-hmm. our um cold ass family yep. <laughs> who are just freezing yep. um but they're able to scramble up some some um eggs and and it, uh, um Oz's mom is kind of taken out of it and and Vic tries to help and I'm like keep going Vic we're going to get some answers yep. <laughs> about this history about this family but Oz shuts it down um, and then later we have um, another, the actress who plays, um, is, is Oz's mom named Luis? Uh, Francis. Or Francis. Francis. Yeah. The, the actress who plays Francis is just continues to deliver mm-hmm. and, a, and a, like a great performance um, for many of the things that were mentioned last week, but also this scene in the tub. And the, again, there's something so hopeless about all of these moments with Oz and his mom in this mm-hmm. episode. Yeah. And even to some extent, Vic. Mm-hmm. And just the situation. And and I think they did that very well. Because 
you we have to root for them to get the power back on by any means necessary. We have to root for them for doing these things because we like we want them to have hope and not be so hopeless. And and it um there was a line because she she tells them if my if my body if my mind goes before my body take me out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> And I love his response. You're not a dog. You're my mom. Mom. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, it's just so, again, I, I like how the, the dialogue is written in such a natural way while at the same time using great metaphors. And, but it's just like, yeah, that, that would be his response because mm-hmm. like, she she's all he has left and has and it's almost we we talk about how Oz is constantly wanting to prove himself and um what wants the power like mm-hmm. he's power hungry he's got he's got little man disabled like he's got like I need to prove that I'm better if mm-hmm. not I can eat at the same table as you all yeah. Um, I'm just a poor kid, but I want you to see me as a rich man. And and yet in this situation with his mom, it's not about that. It's just about like protecting this person who protected him to some extent. Mm-hmm. And and it's the hopelessness because she's fading and he can't do anything about it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and yeah, and then he, you know, he, uh, yeah, and then he just, you know, uses, and but because of that, feelings of hopelessness, he's like, okay, how can I turn this into an opportunity? And then he, you know, and he, and he, not huh? with his mom, no, not with no, his mom, though. No, not with his mom, but at least as far as the opportunity to like, what can he, you know, whenever he like did confront the city councilman, because I think it goes back to the. You know, beginning of the episode where he talks about, you know, where like the, you know, whenever he was trying to get the gener- you know, the, the, the electricity yeah. siphoned off for, you know, for the tunnels, you know, at first it was like the motivation was to so he can make his make the bliss, uh, but right. then, but then, um, but then once they couldn't get the generator to work in the apartment, to your point about breakfast, and uh, you know, and 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 then he and because of the hopelessness that he feels for his mom, um. Yeah, then he's just like, okay, I'm going to figure out a way, you know, the the, the motivation has shifted from just yep, just from the exactly. bliss to now getting, you know, getting that, getting warmth back into the city and, and, and Crown Point uh, and, 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 and Cr- leveraging the city. Point. Yep. Yeah, and being, being a Robin Hood, mm-hmm. which, which I think is it, like this episode really showcased to me what a great foil to Bruce Wayne he is yeah. mm-hmm. because Bruce Wayne is the rich guy. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> He's yeah. the rich guy who, who like drowns in sorrow because of the death of his parents and all that. We know, we know who Bruce Wayne is, mm-hmm. but now we have Oz who he's just th- this poor kid. And I'm glad you brought up bliss at the beginning, just because I didn't think about it until now about how, that that drug dealing um underground part was so underplayed in mm-hmm. this episode if you really think about it that the a lot of the longer sequences a lot of the longer shots were all occurring in this in this um apartment building yeah. that was that's in Crown's point that we we know from Vic's episode earlier, like had there was so much life there, but now after the events of um, the Riddler has has become a place of squalor, and like now we're finding out more about how the city is just turning a blind eye to it because the poor people live there, and it's mm-hmm. just it allows it fuels the speech at the end of the episode at gold summit, um, which turns out to just be Oz pitching himself to 
all of the gangsters and and really saying if we all come together we can we can run sal and sophia out of town yeah he's not technically lying um (laughs) and 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 who who are the rich the rich gangsters it's it's interesting how they did a good job about about making sure it's clear like even in this underground um sector of gotham there's a hierarchy and Mm -hmm. there's classes there's a class system and 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 so there's this like I, I I know at the beginning we kept talking about power vacuum, but it's not even a power vacuum. It's just more like, okay, well, do we really need these two like controlling majority, or can the minority, if c- they come together, become the majority? So, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It definitely, it's almost it is it is a very class almost ca- almost caste system <laughs> as far as. The- yeah. You know, with the with the uh, you know even uh, I, I, you know I didn't think about that until you like drew the parallels between the two. Um, you know, the underworld has this system of of of, of class is classism as well as the you know the, just the normal rich you know corrupt politicians mm-hmm. and other rich people Bruce Wayne that we see that in, yeah. in, in Gotham. Um, it's just so many so many parallels, and I think that just makes for a very compelling story um, and, and why this show is just working, working so well. And, you know, and, and as we, as we talk about this episode too, you know, one of the things, you know, we mentioned, you mentioned the word family when you, you were talking about Sal and, and, and Sophia and, and really it was just, you know, I guess the found family is that recurring theme that has sort of been interspersed throughout the series, but it really was on display here as far as the storytelling. Uh, L, you know the the story beats that we're focused on. You know we have Oz, the found family of Oz, Vic, and Oz's mother. We have the, you know Oz and the other crime families. You know to like consolidate their power to overtake Sophia and Sal. Um, mm-hmm. You know Eve and her girls. I mean that was you know that was that found family because, you know that was I think that's what made that opening scene that that scene that you open up with so so powerful. It's because you know Eve. You know, she she you know she knew about the hangman. She actually told one of her girls to like draw her up, you know, let her you know whenever she's going to be asking about around on the street, you know, yeah, tell her to, tell her to come up because she again Eve wanted to protect her girls. So yeah, they did. Yeah, because yeah. you know they had that encounter at the club that night, and um and it also was sort of you know fulfilling, you know Eve from the very beginning was like worried that you know it was going to lead back Al's actions were going to lead yeah. back to her. Yeah, it finally, yeah. It finally did. So she's been planning for this, and oh yeah, oh yeah. yeah. She's she she cut ties. That's part of yeah. the reason why she didn't go to Crown's Point with Oz yeah. because yeah. she didn't she didn't want anything to do with it or the Hangman. Yeah. I yeah. think it's also worth pointing out um, with how how you brought up um, the continued stories of Rex Calabrese that we're hearing um, during Gold Summit. Another reason why it's so evident these people would suddenly start to listen to Oz is because he played that card of, I know who y'all are. Mm -hmm. I know your family. He has that line about Benny. Yep. (laughs) (laughs) Or like like your 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 father built that bridge and and all this stuff. Like they forgot our names. Yeah. Like, and it's something, it's something out of out of I don't know I keep thinking I keep thinking about a movie the newsies mm-hmm. okay okay classic 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 okay Christian Bale in his prime <laughs> no. <laughs> no Christian Bale in his prime was Batman <laughs> but still okay if you ever want to watch Batman carry a tune go check out the newsies okay <laughs> I, I'm, I wonder if it's on Disney plus my brother was obsessed with that. We watched it like at least once a year during my that's childhood. So that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm very familiar with it, but I keep thinking about that, that whole thing. Cause it was about the news, the newsboys banding together to overthrow the, the newspaper company and publishing mm-hmm. and all that stuff. And it just, 
this whole gold summit turns into a scene that feels like it's out of the newsies mm. where it's like, the, we can't let them get away with this. We got to come together and rise up because, because we're the working men. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's a stretch because arguably all of like the people he's talking to are primarily the bosses of the working men, but still, yeah. He 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 uses that card um, to unionize, and yeah. and I think that's that it's a showcase of of again what this series is set up to do is how Penguin comes into power the way he does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's totally yeah that yeah. I mean, like you said, be setting up that foil um, with with like in the, again the class system and yeah because yeah i mean it was the he, he hit all the right buttons you know it's like you know talk about yep. donnie yeah hey donnie boy in the bridge and and yep. even even at the end you know when, when zhao like finally um you know you know challenges us about the code and he's like yeah you know i do have you know and he, you know he just throws everything back i mean he had you know he he it was just that was a very solid moment too, and and, it, and it's believe you know, and all the things that they've led up to this moment, it it shows why it's believable that he does become the you know gentleman criminal lead of of, of Gotham. Yeah. the The other big thing that happens in this episode is um, Vic kills Squid. Yeah, yeah, that was the one place where I was kind of like. Okay, I saw where it was, you know, we saw it coming, so I was kind of a little underwhelmed by the, the it, 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 but also, the, but I think the reaction of Vic, um, with with Oz and and then I think what 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 but what helped make it more salient for me was when Vic was sitting there in in the in the apartment and he saw the blood stain on the shoe and he was like rubbing it off because I think that was. Where it was just like, you know, the, the circle is, you know, he has completely fallen <laughs> from the kid that, you know, had a choice multiple times to like get out of this world, but he, he has decided to, to to go this route and he's he's fully committed to it now. Well, he, he kind of does it accidentally in a weird way. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, it's like, like it. You and he tried it. to talk to Oz about it, but wrong yeah. time, wrong time to bring that up. And then yeah. he ends up having to, like, he, I don't, a fall from grace is hard. He, he's, he definitely, it's like, okay, well, where are you going to go from here? Like, we'll yeah. see next week if that haunts him, but, but now we don't know. He, he's going to be in a hostage situation with Sophia. And, and if Sophia finds out that he, um, kind of helped Oz bury her her brother <laughs> in a weird way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know how much is coming out of that. I, I honestly um I like how there's I don't I don't know. There's there's a bit of doubt now in my mind if if Vic will make it past this season. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's more likely that we'll say goodbye to Francis by by the end of this, um, and not both. I I don't think it's going to be both, but yeah, I agree. Um, but but I do appreciate the little bit of doubt now, where I'm like, I don't know, it could go either way, um, fifty fifty. Um, yeah. yeah. But I. So, so I, I did like that moment with the blood on the shoes too. I, I thought it was just enough. Um, although <laughs> by that point in the episode, what kind of killed me is like, oh, okay, you're going to let him go home. And that's when Sophie is going to walk in. Got it. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> so he's at home while you're doing this. And you've left the two people who you arguably care about the most in the same location that just so happens. So got so I saw that whole thing. I still yeah. really appreciated the lights coming on, the music mm -hmm. start playing, and then the dance dancing. Because again, it's just like Oz isn't there, but by the point that point in this episode, it's just like you like with everything coming back on there's life there's energy yeah. and there's hope yep 
Um, so, just so yeah, you, it's it, yeah, yeah. Just when you have hope, and then you see so Sophia like you know, slinking up in there, and it's you know with the you know whenever you hear. And the thing is too, like Vic actually heard you know her like break you know breaking into the place. And, you know, because he gets up and but then, you know, the music, the power comes on, the music is really loud. And and, you know, so, yeah, you're right. I mean, it's just like everything, this, the, 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 the convergence of, 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 of things happening. Um, you, yeah. you're, you, 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 yeah, you, you, you framed it perfectly. It's like you do have hope. And then all of a sudden, oh, shit. <laughs> Cliffhanger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're still like this is a TV show that has a few more episodes to go. But you're still like, oh, shit. Well, yeah, yeah. I I wish she was a little bit more sinister looking because she mm. she honestly mm. just looked like I don't even know how to describe it. She yeah. just she had this state of like, oh, I'm I'm a peeping Tom right now and just watching. Well, this. well, you know, it goes back to like, you know, whenever they broke into Oz, when she and Stella broke into his apartment all this time, she thought that his family, he had no family. So yeah. now that you know, yeah. she, it was almost like it was stunned. She was uh, maybe stunned that. Yes, that that's a fair point. That's a fair yeah. point that I, I I didn't forget, but yes, she was under the impression the mom was dead. Mm -hmm. She didn't know anything about the dad. Yeah. Um. So, which we're under the impression that almost the dad's pretty much dead, and and the mom's all he has, but we also. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, so they kind of did a reverse of mm -hmm. perspective between the viewers and Sophia, but but yeah, that's that's fair that she would be like, wait a second, why is an old lady here dancing with, and 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 she knows Vic, she's right. met him, so I'm sure I'm sure she's placed his face, but I don't know. They they had such brief interactions that I don't know by how much, um, she she puts two two and two together. Yeah. Um, but well, that, that sets us up for next week where we will continue on both of these journeys. And on that note, Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me on X, formerly known as, tw formerly known as Twitter at W I L L M P O L K P O L K Will and Polk. And you can find me there too <laughs> at S J Belmont S J B L M O N T. Please follow our crew there at Scene and Nerd. Find us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Threads at Scene underscore N underscore Nerd. And visit our website www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome.